A brilliant mathematician once wrote, quote, For a person of intelligence is well equipped to solve the problems of life. We must have some defined aim in life and be able to fill competently that position in which we may find ourselves. Let each defeat be a source of a new endeavor and each victory the strengthening of our spirit of gratitude and charity towards the unsuccessful. This brilliant individual was Martha Euphemia Lofton Haynes, otherwise known as Dr. Euphemia Haynes. If you are unfamiliar with her name, Dr. Haynes was the first African-American woman to earn a Ph.D. in mathematics. She earned this Ph.D. in 1943, and her story reflects one's life of determination, excellence, and a profound commitment to education and civil rights. The details are coming right up. The history of math is our intellectual foundation for understanding science. Science. Beautiful, remarkable, awe-inspiring science. It's the creative foundation for our ineffable future. Hi, I'm Gabrielle Burchak, and this is my podcast, Math, Science, History. In the year 415, the infamous philosopher and mathematician Hypatia of Alexandria, Egypt, was savagely murdered by church monks. This murder shocked the Roman community and its government leaders. Hypatia was known far and wide as a respected philosopher, mathematician, government advisor, and a professor. Hypatia, The Sum of Her Life, is a book that I wrote that looks not just at the circumstances surrounding her death, but also at the sum of her entire life. I weave in the details of her education, disciples, Neoplatonic philosophies, female contemporaries, and the many mathematics that she wrote and taught about. There is truly more to Hypatia's life than her death. Hypatia, The Sum of Her Life, written by me, Gabrielle Burchak, is now on sale on Amazon. Buy your copy today. Haynes was born on September 11th, 1890 in Washington, D.C., a city that would play a significant role in her life and career. She was born into a family that valued education and civic engagement. Haynes' mother, Anne Lavinia de Lofton, taught kindergarten in the public schools. She was also highly active in her Catholic church, where she played the organ and directed the children's choir. Haynes' father, William Lofton, was born in Arkansas and moved to Washington, D.C. before 1870. He was a prominent dentist and strongly advocated for the African-American community. He was a member of the Washington Black 400, a group of black aristocrats. At age five, her parents separated, and by 1900, the divorce was final. Custody was given to Haynes' mother, and her father had weekly visitation rights. Growing up in a racially segregated society, Euphemia faced the challenges that many African Americans encountered at the turn of the 20th century. However, the Lofton family's emphasis on education gave her the foundation to overcome these obstacles. She attended M Street High School, later known as Dunbar High School, one of the first public high schools for African-American students in the United States. Dunbar High School was renowned for its rigorous academic curriculum and the exceptional achievements of its graduates, many of whom went on to have distinguished careers in various fields. At M Street High School, Euphemia's love for mathematics began to take hold. The school's curriculum allowed her to study advanced mathematics, and she excelled in her studies. Her teachers, many of whom held advanced degrees, were role models who demonstrated that African Americans could achieve academic excellence despite societal barriers. This early academic success began a lifelong journey of learning, teaching, and breaking down barriers. Haynes was the school's valedictorian, of course. She gave a brilliant, powerful, and inspiring speech, which was quoted at the beginning of this podcast. It was the perfect representation of her life. After graduating high school, Euphemia continued her academic journey at Smith College, one of the prestigious Seven Sisters Colleges. In 1914, she earned a Bachelor of Arts degree in mathematics. It was a remarkable achievement when very few women, particularly black women, were pursuing higher education in mathematics. 
Euphemia's academic journey didn't stop there. In 1930, she earned a Master of Arts degree in education from the University of Chicago, one of the top universities in the country. This degree was a testament to her dedication to mathematics and education, which she would intertwine throughout her career. Euphemia's most significant academic achievement came in 1943, when she became the first black woman to earn a PhD in mathematics. She achieved this milestone at the Catholic University of America in Washington, D.C. Her dissertation, titled The Determination of Sets of Independent Conditions Characterizing Certain Special Cases of Symmetric Correspondences, was a rigorous and highly specialized work in mathematics. The dissertation delves into the mathematical study of symmetric correspondences, a type of relationship between elements in different sets that maintains a two-way balanced connection. Her dissertation looked at two different methods for representing shapes or curves on a flat surface. She studied these methods to understand how they were different and what made each one unique. She was comparing two ways to draw and describe certain types of curves in geometry, exploring their characteristics to see how they behaved differently. All right, quick heads up. For the next two minutes, it's going to get kind of mathy. So please feel free to jump ahead, but stick around because I'm going to go into all of her amazing and profound work that she did, including being part of the desegregation of the schools in D.C. and how she empowered so many students and their quest for advanced study. The key aspects of her dissertation included a focus on symmetric correspondence. Symmetric correspondences are mathematical relationships where, if an element from one set is related to an element in another set, the reverse relationship is also true. It also holds. This is a fundamental concept in set theory and algebra. Another aspect of her dissertation included determination of independent conditions. Haynes aimed to identify the minimum set of conditions necessary to characterize special cases of these symmetric correspondences. Independent conditions, this is a term that refers to rules or criteria that don't overlap or depend on each other, but are essential for defining the relationship. Another aspect of her dissertation included special cases. The dissertation zeroes in on particular instances or special cases of symmetric correspondences. These cases might have unique properties or structures that require a detailed and nuanced mathematical approach. Another aspect was her mathematical techniques. Haynes employed advanced mathematical tools such as set theory, combinatorial analysis, and linear algebra to explore and define these conditions. Finally, the dissertation also examined how these symmetric correspondences could be represented geometrically, particularly in the context of parametric rational plane curves. Haynes explored the visual and spatial interpretation of these mathematical relationships and compared different methods of representation. Her dissertation represents a significant contribution to the field of mathematics, particularly in understanding how complex relationships can be characterized and defined in a precise logical manner. Her work laid the groundwork for further exploration of symmetric relationships in mathematics, which would have applications in areas including graph theory, algebraic geometry, and even in fields like physics and computer science. Though highly specialized, her dissertation showcases a deep mathematical expertise and her ability to tackle complex problems with precision and creativity. In my opinion, I don't think that Euphemia Haynes' work has been studied enough. And I had a chance to read her dissertation, and it is absolutely brilliant work. And I don't want to go into too many details because this podcast is for the general listener. But if you are a math nerd like me and you love to learn and read other people's dissertations, I highly recommend that you visit yet another math blog. It's written by Professor David Joyner, and he has a blog post about Euphemia Haynes. And if you're interested, 
interested in reading the LaTeX version of her dissertation, shoot him an email and he can send you one. Or if you want, you can also visit the archives at the Catholic University of America where all of her papers reside and you can also request a copied version of her dissertation. But going back to Professor David Joyner's math blog, yet another math blog, be sure to check it out. He's got some fantastic articles in there, some great math stuff if you're a math nerd like me. And also stick around because in an email, he told me that he and professors Ed Ray Goins and John Stigall are working on a detailed project of Euphemia Haynes' dissertation. Professor Ed Ray Goins is leading Leading the project. So I'm very excited to read more about that. Again, be sure to check it out. Yet another math blog by Professor David Joyner. Dr. Haynes' dissertation was a personal victory for her and a groundbreaking moment for African American women in math. At a time when the academic and professional worlds were closed to African Americans and black women, Dr. Haynes broke through barriers and set a precedent for future generations. Once she received her PhD, Dr. Haynes embarked on a career that would have a lasting impact on education in Washington, D.C. and beyond. She dedicated her life to teaching and improving the educational opportunities for black students, particularly in the D.C. public school system. Dr. Haynes began her teaching career at her alma mater, Dunbar High School, or M Street, where she taught mathematics. Over the years, she held various teaching and administrative positions in the D.C. public schools, including serving as a mathematics professor at Minor Teachers College, which later became part of the University of the District of Columbia. In addition to her work in the classroom, Dr. Haynes was deeply involved in educational administration and reform. She was appointed to the D.C. Board of Education in 1960 and was president from 1966 to 1967. Dr. Haynes was the first black woman to hold this position and, without a doubt, she represented. She was a vocal advocate for desegregation and equal educational opportunities for all students during her tenure. Dr. Haynes believed that education was a fundamental right and that quality education should be accessible to everyone, regardless of race or socioeconomic status. Her work on the Board of Education was so instrumental in the fight against segregation that her efforts as a teacher played a vital role in implementing the 1954 Supreme Court decision in Brown v. Board of Education and the desegregation of schools. After the desegregation, a curriculum was implemented in 1959 for students at all levels. Students were required to take IQ tests or evaluations, upon which principals and teachers would designate students to honors or regular college preparatory classes. In other words, it wasn't up to the students to determine what they could study. Instead, it was the decision of the teachers and the principals to determine whether the students received education for academics or education for blue-collar work. However, in November 1963, Haynes spoke out against this process. She stated that, quote, man-made predictions determine the future of a child and eradicate, quote, freedom of choice. She noted that the tracking system opposed the American ideal and that we are a free society that deserves the potential and dignity of self-direction. Finally, she stated that those who were placed in the lower tracks of education were given a feeling of inadequacy. A year later, in 1964, she spoke before the school board again, stating that the tracking system, quote, attempts in apartheid-like fashion to separate the underprivileged, unquote. That is such a powerful quote. In the summer of 1966, Haynes was elected to the president of the school board, upon which the board ordered the dismantling of the track system. They were able to now implement new classroom methods. Dr. Haynes' contributions to mathematics and education were profound. Still, her impact extended beyond the classroom and the school board. She worked tirelessly for civil rights and social justice, ensuring that the benefits of education were available to all. 
In addition to her work in education, Dr. Haynes participated in numerous civic and community organizations. She was a member of the American Association of University Women, the Catholic Interracial Council of Washington, and the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. Through these organizations, she promoted educational equity, civil rights, and social justice. Dr. Haynes also contributed to the broader academic community through her involvement in professional organizations, such as the Mathematical Association of America. She advocated for increasing the representation of African Americans and women in mathematics. She worked to create opportunities for underrepresented groups in mathematics and science. Many recognized her dedication to education and social justice, and she received numerous awards and honors throughout her career. Among her many prestigious awards, two recognizable ones include an honorary doctorate from Howard University and the Popel Medal from Pope John XIII. This Popel Medal wasn't just an acknowledgement of her contributions to mathematics. It was also an acknowledgement of her contributions to the Catholic Church and her ongoing commitment to social justice. Dr. Euphemia Lofton Haynes passed away on July 25, 1980. She left a legacy of excellence in education, mathematics, and civil rights. Her life and work have inspired countless individuals, particularly black women, to pursue careers in math and education. Her impact is still felt today, as her story serves as a powerful reminder of the importance of perseverance, education, and advocacy. In 1999, the Mathematical Association of America established the Euphemia Lofton Haynes Award to honor her legacy and recognize individuals who have made significant contributions to the advancement of underrepresented groups in mathematics. Dr. Haynes' work on behalf of educational equity continues to resonate, particularly in the ongoing struggles for racial and gender equality in education. Her life is a testament to the power of education as a tool for social change, and her legacy continues to inspire new generations of mathematicians, educators, and activists. Euphemia Lofton Haynes' life was a powerful testament to the strength of intellect, determination, and a profound commitment to justice. As a pioneering mathematician and educator, she broke barriers and shattered ceilings, becoming the first African-American woman to earn a PhD in math. Yet her contributions extended far beyond her scholarly achievements. Through her relentless advocacy for educational equity and her pivotal role in desegregating Washington, D.C.'s public schools, Haynes worked tirelessly to ensure that every child, regardless of race, had the opportunity to learn and thrive. Her legacy is not just one of academic excellence, but of a life dedicated to lifting others, fighting for fairness, and transforming the educational landscape for future generations. Dr. Euphemia Haynes stands as a beacon of courage and a champion of equality, inspiring all who follow in her footsteps. Thank you for listening to Math Science History. And until next time, carpe diem. Thank you for joining me at Math Science History. Please remember to subscribe to the show. Also, if you could please leave a rating or a review, it would be really appreciated. Because those ratings and reviews really do help to increase my listenership, which help to get me more sponsors, which help me keep the podcast up and running. If you want to learn more about the history of math and science, please visit me at mathsciencehistory.com. If you like what you're listening to, and if you like what you're reading, please feel free to click on that coffee button and buy me a cup of coffee. Every cup of coffee that you buy helps me pay for the expenses that go into making this podcast. Also, if you're interested in leaving me a comment or chatting with me, you can always find me on your preferred social media platform, including X, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Goodreads, TikTok, Threads, etc., etc., etc. Just go to Google and search for Gabrielle Burchak. You can find me everywhere. <laughs> Until next time, carpe diem. Carpe diem.